Hello, this is Andrew Westoff with Homes Mortgage Lending and I'm coming at you today with an interest rate update as well as I'm going to uh, show you today a comparison between FHA and conventional because FHA has recently made some really positive changes to their pricing. Um, mainly their uh, monthly mortgage insurance has dropped significantly to the point where with their interest rates um, and with that lower mortgage insurance, it's starting to make more sense even for well-qualified borrowers uh, to pursue an FHA mortgage. So I want to show you that a little bit. Um, but uh, before we get into that, I want to talk to you a little bit about the market. So it's been a bit of a roller coaster recently. Um, the, you probably have heard about some bank failures that have uh, caused interest rates to drop. Um, and uh, since then, interest rates have gone back up. So right now, um, we're still in the same uh, kind of uh, ball game that we've been in for quite a while, which is um, the inflation is causing the Fed to react and, and raise the Fed funds rate. Um, which is causing mortgage interest rates to increase. Um, there's some talk that maybe the Fed won't raise interest rates further this year, um, or maybe they will. Right now, the market's pricing in about a 50% chance that in May, uh, the Fed will raise the Fed funds rate uh, a quarter of a percent. Um, and a lot of that will um, uh, depend on how numbers come in in the near future, which uh, uh, next Friday, April 7th, we get the jobs report. So that's kind of the big focus right now is how the labor market looks. If it continues to be strong, um, there's a really good chance the Fed's going to raise that Fed funds rate a little bit more and it's going to cause interest rates to, to rise further. Uh, and then shortly after uh, um, the Friday, April 7th, we're going to also get uh, the next CPI inflation numbers, uh, which will come out on uh, April 12th. So um, if those two things are both not in our favor, we're going to see rates rise. Um, if they're in our favor, we're likely to see rates drop a little bit. Um, in the meantime, between now and next Friday, April 7th, we're probably going to um, just kind of see rates bounce around a little bit from where, where they are. So without further ado, let's take a look at um, these two scenarios. So um, first, I'm going to show you the conventional. So this is a 30 year, both of these are 30 year fixed convention, uh, 30 year fixed loans on a single family uh, primary residence. Um, the interest rates are a little different. So on the conventional, I'm assuming a 740 in, uh, credit score. <clears throat> Sorry, the credit scores are a little bit, bit different. On the, the conventional, I'm uh, assuming a 740 FICO. Um, on the FHA, I'm assuming a 680 FICO. And the reason for that is because there's not a change on the interest rate with that FICO score uh, on FHA. So it doesn't matter if you have a 740 or a 680, um, you get the same pricing. So if you have a little bit lower of a credit score, FHA really makes a lot of sense because you'll get uh, hit pretty hard on both the monthly mortgage insurance and the interest rate on conventional. But even if you have 740 on both of these, the numbers are the same. Um, so you'll still see that, that, you know, there's still some argument to be made to do a, uh, an FHA loan versus a conventional. Um, these are both single family primary residence, assuming a 30 day lock period. And these are interest rates as of uh, today, which this video is being recorded on uh, April, or sorry, March 31st, Friday, March 31st. So they're obviously subject to change, but the comparison, the difference should be about the same from day to day. Um, so uh, $250,000 purchase price, I did 5% down. Uh, we can do 3% down conventional and 3.5% down FHA, but I just left it at 5% to compare apples to apples. If you did 3% down conventional, the monthly mortgage insurance would be a bit higher. 3.5% um, down FHA, the monthly mortgage insurance would be higher because you're borrowing more, but uh, the actual rate of the mortgage insurance is uh, the same rate. So it even gets better from the comparison if you're putting even less down. Um, so uh, on this conventional, we would be looking at today a 6.352% uh, interest rate, which would be 6.72% APR. Um, just put some standard estimated costs in here uh, for a transaction in Southeast Michigan, estimates on the homeowner's insurance and the property taxes, uh, which would get us to about 25,171 out of pocket, which I'll quick flip to the FHA just to show you 25,096. So pretty darn close on the out of pocket. So you're paying, you know, pretty apples to apples on the out of pocket. So the real difference here is going to be the monthly payment. So at that interest rate, um, with that credit score, we'd have uh, mortgage insurance of about $61.35, which would total a total uh, payment of $2,114.47. So just to flip to the FHA payment. So again, this is the FHA, assuming a 680 credit score. And like I mentioned, this would be the same pricing if this credit score were higher. 
uh, once we get lower than that, this, the, um, the pricing on the FHA starts to get a little bit worse, but it gets uh, even more worse on the conventional. So usually it's, it's pretty rare that I have a client that I'm um, doing an, a conventional loan for that has a credit score under 680. Uh, so at this point, we're at 2,000, So just to flip back, 2,114 versus 2,052. So they're not crazy different, but um, a good 65-ish dollars difference on that, on that payment. And then what I did here on the left is a breakdown of how much you're paying per $100,000 that you borrow, because this is just one random scenario of $250,000 purchase with 5% down. So uh, what I did is added the principal and interest plus the mortgage insurance. So on the conventional, that's 1539.47 and divided that by 237.5 because it's a $237,500 uh, loan amount. So that gets us $6.49 per $1,000 borrowed um, and then multiply that by 100. So $649 for every $100,000 borrowed on the conventional. Um, and this is rounded up a little bit, so it's actually a hair less than that. Uh, but same thing on the FHA. Uh, the mortgage insurance is higher, um, but the interest rate is so much lower and I, I apologize, I don't know if I showed the interest rate, 5.438% um, with an APR of 6.313. And then, uh, so on here, we, we're adding that 108.19 monthly mortgage insurance to the principal and interest of 1369.52, just 1477.71. Dividing that out by um, the total loan amount is higher on FHA because there's an upfront mortgage insurance premium that's financed in, and I'm gonna talk about that here in just a moment, uh, but dividing that out by uh, 241.656, because it's $241,656 uh, um, loan amount, is $6.12 per month, so $6.12 per $100,000 borrowed, or $612 for every $100,000 borrowed. So for every $100,000 borrowed, um, it is uh, about $37 difference on the monthly payment, 649 versus 612. So um, the th so, so just comparing uh, the, the actual monthly payment in the out-of-pocket, FHA seems like the way to go. But there are a couple negative things on the FHA that you need to consider. Um, where a lot of my clients in this situation, where if they have that 740 credit score or above, which it gets you the best pricing with homes mortgage lending, uh, I'm probably pushing them a little bit towards going conventional, even though that payment's a little bit higher. And here's why. The biggest reason is this uh, upfront mortgage insurance premium. 1.75% uh, of the loan amount gets, just gets tacked on, which you still see a lower payment even with that on there. But the problem is, is that if you're gonna refinance this home, um, which with where interest rates are, hopefully most uh, interest rates drop from where they are and, and most clients buying a home today are gonna be refinancing in the next year or two. No guarantee of that, but it's it's uh, uh, there's a good likelihood. Um, this 4,156 is just equity kind of stripped out of that home. Um, that makes it uh, so that you uh, have a, a higher loan amount, even though you're probably refinancing to a conventional loan. And then the other negative is if you put less than 10% down on FHA, this mortgage insurance is going to stay on there for the life of the loan. So until you refinance um, or uh, you know you sell the sell the home or pay off the loan. Um, so if you get to 20% equity because you're paying it down aggressively, you're going to still have that, uh, in this case, $108.19 uh, $108 monthly mortgage insurance. Um, and then the other uh, reason that conventional makes a little bit more sense if it's kind of a, um, you're in the situation where it's close is that it's a lot easier to get an offer accepted with a conventional loan because uh, realtors and sellers typically equate conventional to being more qualified. Now, I think that might start to change a little bit because it's becoming more common knowledge that, um, hey, FHA just might be the better financing for the client. Um, but there are a couple other things like the, the appraisal is a little bit tougher on FHA. Um, sometimes the loan takes a little bit longer. So uh, not by much though, um, but there's a, a little bit uh, of an advantage, especially if there's going to be uh, multiple offers on a home to go conventional to get the offer accepted. So what I tell clients a lot of times is um, even if their credit score might be a little bit lower, so FHA is more of a clear choice. Um, hey, we can do FHA or conventional. Let's talk with your realtor. If there's going to be some competition on the home you're offering on, maybe we go conventional to get the offer accepted because it doesn't matter if you have a little bit lower of a payment if you don't get your offer accepted. Um, just kind of the, uh, the, the truth of the matter. 
Um, so, but just wanted to, to throw that out there, uh, especially if you find, if you happen to ha uh, be interested in a home that doesn't have multiple offers on it, there's not a lot of interest in the home, um, make sure you're looking at FHA with the lender that you're working with. If you're looking at purchasing a home in Michigan and you wanna work with a, um, a mortgage local mortgage broker that has great rates and great service, I'd be happy to help. All my contact information is in the video description. I hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'd be happy to help. Um, and like I said, my contact information is in there. So if you have a little bit more of an in-depth question, feel free to email me, shoot me a call or text, and I would be happy to assist if I can. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. See you on the next video.